Good day, Chena Valley educators. Um, this is to replace the uh, webinar that we had on Tuesday, July 28th, and the recording didn't turn out very well. So I am just re-recording what was the um, the one hour long webinar. And uh, obviously you won't be getting like the questions people asked and whatnot. Um, if you still have questions at the end of this, or you have questions, you can always post them in the stream and you can always check that EdTech distance classroom resource page. So uh, this will probably actually be less than an hour because I'm going to kind of walk through everything that was in my agenda. If you see me looking down, I'm looking at my notes to make sure I see them. And um, here we go. Uh, first of all, we talked about starting our Google Meets. This is a Google Meets webinar. Maybe I didn't say that. Um, we, we talked about starting our Google Meets from our Google Classroom and why that's important. So I'm going to go into uh, one of my Google Classrooms uh, and and kind of walk through how you find the, uh, the link and generate the link and why you might hide the link. Um, but the importance of starting your Google Meets from your class's Google Classroom can't be overstated. That is where you get your uh, security. That is where you get all the teacher controls. And so if you are instead using the Google Meet SSO app in Classlink, well, then you're going to lose the security and control that a teacher has. Even if it's limited right now, it is getting better. And I think we should establish uh, all of our Google Meets with our classrooms through Google Classroom. I'm going to show my screen to you. OK, so here I am in a brand new Google Classroom. And in order to uh, right now, it says Meet Link, Generate Meet Link. If I want to generate the Meet Link for this classroom, I can tap on Generate Meet Link. Or I believe I showed you last time, go over here to the gear and scroll down till you see the Meet icon. There's not a lot of things to get lost in, in the settings here, but this is uh, where you control the Meet. Uh, information. Generate Meet Link simply means I'm going to make the Meet Link available to my students to see. It doesn't mean that my kids can get in before me though. Students, students have a different um, email address or basically it's called a domain than the adults do. So anybody with an at stu.chino.k12.ca.us a student will not be able to get into a meeting before an adult. Now, you know, you guys are also hitting the meet link um, in our Google Classroom to access this webinar, and you guys are able to get in before me. And that's fine because you're adults. Uh, you have at chino.k12.ca.us. That is your domain. And so um, by Remaining in Google Meets and accessing Google Meets through the Google Classroom, you have that control. You're the only, you're the first person who enters the meet, no matter what. Your kids dump in immediately after you, um, but that's it. The other control that you guys have is um, that when you start a meeting like this, everyone is automatically muted, um, and also when the meeting is over, when the adult leaves, students also are exited from the meeting. That's, of course, different for adults, all adults. Um, in the future, there's some updates coming, and I want to address that, too, since we're here. In the future, the uh, features that are being updated will give you a lot more control, but it's only going to be if you access Google Meet through your Google Classroom. This is a nice little slide that um, somebody I know made, and it walks through the updates that are coming sometime this year, this fall, I should say, and talk about dates here in a minute. Um, there are two levels of updates, and I know if you notice this, you're going to see, oh, standard G Suite and Enterprise for Education. I bet Chino Valley Unified is this one, but no phone. No, my friends, this down here is where Chino Valley Unified is. So we get all of these updates. Kids will raise their hand more easily. We will get the grid view that will have as many as 49 um, uh, students at one time. Closed captions means that they can listen in English, but they'll get the captions in their native language for a limited number of languages, obviously. But, but still, that's a really cool feature. 
also you'll be able to take attendance with it in a much more easy way right now we have kind of a a little workaround for you and that's fine but uh tracking attendance is going to make be become so much easier um, breakout rooms yay breakout rooms are the one thing that we are asked about most frequently and it's the um it's the thing i don't like describing because the workaround is not easy at all um, however, I know it's very necessary for people. So we'll get that. Um, the Q and A's, I don't know much about, but it's, it's basically a, allowing, um, the use of chat rooms and the chat room in different ways. Polling. I just learned about this a couple of days ago, but that sounds super cool. You'll have more control about, like I said, the chat room, the muting kids won't be able to unmute themselves. If you mute them, there's a bunch of other things. Uh, but these are the, the top requested features and these are the ones that are coming in with the update now when is it coming it's coming sometime officially during quarter three or quarter four which means sometime between july 1st and december 31st well i'm sorry i believe we can narrow that down but i don't work for google and uh, i will say the people at google camp said that folks there were saying late september regardless it could show up um anytime but it's unlikely to be available to us any of these features available to us before august 10th the first day of school so unfortunately we are going to be using our existing version of google meet uh, for a little while longer so let's learn how to use that and kind of leverage whatever power we have okay so back to that brand new uh, google classroom if i tap on generate meet link it's going to generate a meet link and it's also going to toggle on the visible to students automatically so my students can see the, <clears throat> the meet link on the stream page right here they can see that just in the same way that you see yours i'm in a teacher view and so it, it gives me this little icon if i go over here and i want to hide it from my students i can do that and when I go back to my stream view as a teacher, I can see an eyeball with a line through it, which indicates that my students can't see it right now. And why might I want to do that? Why might I want to hide the view of this link for my students? Well, simply because there's, there's students who are going to try and pop in to your Google Meet when you're not there. They want to find their friends. They want to do a bunch of different things, but they won't be allowed. And so all you're preventing by making it not visible is kids wasting their time waiting for you to show up at a time where there is no meeting. Uh, I think it's just basically a good, um, good protocol to, to let them know that the link will show up shortly before the meeting begins. Also, you should know that that link changes each time you, um, you start a new meet. So uh, this is not something you're going to share. We'll talk about that too. If you do need to change it, um, because I don't know why you might want to change it, but you could change it. You can just reset and you can switch it around. But it is supposed to change the uh, access code, the back end access code every single time. All right, I'm going to leave this one um, not visible to students right now. And um, I mentioned that you should not share this you're sharing it already on your stream page right you're, you, anybody who's in this classroom can already see it so when i say don't share it i mean don't copy this and then send it via email or um photo or whatever don't send this to anybody because it won't work for anybody who is not in this google classroom so only the teachers and students in this google classroom for k james can use this link right here. However, sometimes there's going to be a new student. You might have a student that uh, is so new that he or she does not have a network ID yet. And without a network ID, they can't be a part of your Google Classroom. We ask that you wait about 72 hours before worrying about a student who has not yet been rostered to your Google Classroom or your McGraw-Hill or Sabbath Easy Bridge or HMH. Um, wait 72 hours. It takes a little bit of um, programming magic to happen before they're actually in there. So let's say it's the first day of school for, for Larry and Larry wants to be in this meeting and you want Larry in that meeting. Here's how you do that. From the stream, it's the day of the meeting. I have communicated with Larry that after the meeting begins, I'm going to send him a link to this meeting. I can 
tap on that, go in, welcome my students, How yet? how's everyone doing, yada yada. Um, as kids are filtering in, I'm going to click on copy joining information. Now it's on my virtual clipboard and I can send this via email to Larry's mom or via a private email to Larry because he doesn't have district email yet. I can even take a photograph of it with my um, smartphone and send it to mom. But this is what he's going to use. This is different from the one inside the, uh, the stream page. Uh, if Larry doesn't have a computer, he can dial in using this information. But at least now Larry can, uh, can join our meeting. If you want to grab this information ahead of time, I've had a couple teachers do this as well, and that has worked for them. So what they did is they opened the meeting, even though nobody else was here, they opened that meeting from the Google Classroom right here, arrived in their meeting, nobody else was here, and they came down and, um, again, either from that pop-up or from down here, copied that join meeting information and sent it to the person. And they said it worked great. I recommend doing it after you start because I know that sometimes Google Meet regenerates those links. So I recommend waiting until after the meeting has started, sending it to the student, and then having them turn around and join. Now, what's going to, hi, what's going to happen when that student joins is you're going to get a pop-up on your screen and a little bit of a doorbell. And since you're expecting somebody, you can go ahead and let them in. It'll tell you who's trying to get in if he's put um, some kind of identification information in there. And you'll just simply be able to accept. That's great. Another situation in which you might use this strategy, go down and copy the joining information and share it with somebody from outside our district, which is essentially what you're doing, is maybe if you're having a parent join your meeting. If you have a room parent who wants to say some words to your students, if you have a, <clears throat> a, a career day coming up and you've got, you know, mom's a firefighter and you want her to share about what it is to be a firefighter, you know, and dad's a pharmacist and you can have dad talk about that. So you can share with people what you're essentially doing is letting people into a very secure area with the district that's locked down to just district, but you have to purposely let each one in. If you get somebody asking you to come into your meeting, I don't know how this would happen, but just I'm going to say it anyway. If you get somebody who wants to join your meeting and you don't remember ever sending somebody information or inviting anybody, you're not expecting anybody, don't let them in. Don't let them in. Um, you might hear from that person twice, and then they're not going to be allowed. They can only be denied twice, and then they're not allowed to bother you again. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, one last thing. Um, people say, I would like to use a calendar. I would like to put, I'd like to schedule my Google Meets on a calendar. And while you may um, um, definitely use a calendar, it's a great idea. I don't recommend using this, see where it says classwork, Google Calendar. Even though you're going into this calendar through a Google Classroom, if you start a meeting here, let's see, I'm going to go to uh, 31st. And I'm going to do a fake meeting. If you go here and add Google Meet video conferencing, that sounds correct. You will not have that teacher security. It is not technically taking it through Google Classroom. Now, that doesn't mean you can't calendar a meeting uh, or, or other schedule a meeting so kids see it on their calendar. So um, I just don't want you to do it this way. So I'm going to X that out. And I recommend that you do it the way that you've seen me do it um, a few times because you're here. And that is as classwork, create, I, I create a section or a area called um, class meetings and add. And in this area, this area is where I'm going to create an assignment. And my assignment, this is for an off schedule meeting. So if you have a, a meeting coming up that is something that's not your typical schedule, um, special class meeting, click on the meet link, uh, come over here. It's not a graded item. You want all your students to arrive, or maybe you just want some of your students to come to this special meeting. The due date would be the time and day of the meeting. So on the 31st at one o'clock. And this is basically their due date. So they will get a reminder, or they will first get an announcement that this is 
um, a, a, uh, an assignment. They'll be reminded on their stream page on the left where there's the little due dates and they will, um, they have their directions just like you guys. So if I go into class meetings as my topic, I'm ready to go ahead and assign that. Now you probably have regular class meetings as well. And I would keep those posted on the stream. I mean, you can do this for every single meeting, but that seems like a lot of work. I, I'm sure you're going to all have a regular schedule of the times and days that you meet. And so you probably will not need to post them as assignments at all. Um, perhaps something like this, right? For your regular schedule, I would just have that in an announcement. I'm sure it's already going to be on your school wires page. Um, this is just a regular meeting. I didn't fill out the whole thing because everyone watching this is going to have a different uh, schedule. Uh, when I post it, um, it's there at the top of my page. But as I post more things, I want to make sure it stays at the top of my page. I can't pin it, but I can continually move it to the top. It's grayed out right here because it's already at the top see how you can move stuff to the top so I would do that that's what I've been doing in our um, our Tuesday Wednesday Thursday classroom as well I move things to the top every once in a while when I know that the information is really pertinent so if you have a regular schedule kids know on their regular schedule they come into their Google classroom and tap here if you have a special meeting something that's off schedule that's when I would do the um, assign it as an assignment but I would not use the calendar because then you lose your security I would not use the Google Meet SSO app because then you lose your security. All right. Okay, I want to talk from, I'm going to turn off my camera. It's distracting me. All right, so now you hear my voice and you still see a picture. Goodness. Um, I want to talk about a few things in here, some basic information about Google Meet. Uh, I know sometimes I talk fast. I also know that you can rewatch, you can slow down, you can pause as you're watching this video. So I am gonna just barrel through. You've already seen down here in the lower left-hand corner that that's where you can find join information. Um, you may have noticed that you can also add attachments. So if you have things that you want your students to be able to open during a meeting, you can add attachments down here. Um, I'm going to record a separate video about that, and that will be hosted in the um, new distance learning classroom resource page. But I'll take my take a little note to make sure I don't forget class meet attachments. All right. Um, then at the very bottom, if you don't see this white ribbon, uh, and sometimes it does disappear, uh, you can take your mouse and float down to the bottom third of the page or so, and you should see that white ribbon pop up again. And this ribbon's powerful so you want to make sure you know you can find it. Uh, this is where students are muting themselves. Sometimes they need to be directed to where that mute button is and this is where I just turned off my camera. Now of course you're still seeing an image and if I were to share my screen you would still see that. I just turned off the thing that is taking a video of my face. Way over here when I tap on turn on captions this is going to record captions at the bottom of my screen of my words and my students' words. Obviously, nobody here is talking, so you're only going to see the captions in my words. I point this out because each person in the meeting turns captions on and off for themselves. So students can turn them on for themselves, and in the future, Students can turn them on for themselves and hear your English, or see your English words in their home language. I'm going to turn those off right now. To the right is present now. And I tap on that. You see there are three choices. What The first choice, your entire screen, is what I use 98% of the time because I like to move from one screen to the next screen to another page um, without, without hesitation. Um, and I assume that most teachers are preparing their computers and their screens and their windows before they begin their Google Meet. That's what we recommend. So if you are going to be showing McGraw-Hill or you're going to be showing something in Savas or you're going to be using Kami, you might want to get all those tabs open and ready to go before you begin your Google Meet. And then when you share or present, you 
can share any of those windows, any of those screens, including PowerPoints that you've got um, ready to go on your uh, computer. A window is the opposite basically. The, a window allows a teacher to share just one browser window. It could be several tabs in that window, but just that one browser window. The minute he or she goes to a different browser window, and you can do, you can open a new window by doing this, a new window. The minute you go to a new window is the minute that students do not see what you're doing. They will also see wherever you were last. And that is maybe something you want to use if you uh, are likely to have personal things hidden. I would better safe than sorry. Um, I would make sure anything personal is just closed. This third one's really powerful also. So I use this 98% of the time and I would use this the other two because I never really use this middle one. But a Chrome tab allows you to have the best possible uh, audio video experience when you share a video with your students. Let me show you how that works. If I tap on present now and then a Chrome tab, you can see it opens up the different pages I have open in my browser. This one right here is clearly what I want to show my students. It's my YouTube one. I had it all set up and ready to go. So when I tap on that and then tap on share, it calls up the video. And then this is, in theory, the best audio visual experience you can have with your students. Oh, love hearing my own voice. And we're back. In the lowest right hand corner, there are ellipses, these three little dots. When you tap on them, and I always, always encourage everybody to tap on ellipses, arrows, and uh, hamburgers, any little icons, because they typically open up some sort of extra menu, a little treasure box. When I tap on these ellipses, I get these things here. I can record my meeting. Now, you're probably watching this going, how is she recording this? I'm actually using a different recorder for this particular recording, but to record a meeting, I tap this. As an adult in a Google Classroom, Google Meet, I am the one who gets, I'm the person who gets the recording, but we believe the students can still tap on this, which is a little crazy, and that's being fixed with the update. They tap on that, you're going to get a recording of the meet. Um, more importantly, let's make this work for you. If you want to record your meeting, there's a couple things you should know. First, you're not going to record students' faces or voices. So the only time you would want to record a meeting is during the instructional portion. Or alternatively, you could record the meeting and then record your attendance. And remember, the attendance update is coming later, but one of the suggestions is, and I'm going to see if this will uh, work for me. If I tap on record meeting, it's going to ask me to let my people in the meeting know that we're recording. So do that. As you saw yesterday, if you watched, um, or as you'll see now, there's a red uh, record button in the upper corner. For attendance purposes, if you just tap on Mr. Head and Shoulders right here, you will get a list of all your attendees. And you can just scroll through that. And while you're recording, you're basically recording every name. And then you can go back and stop recording. And that's one quick, easy way to use recording to benefit you um, for attendance. The um, other features under these ellipses, let's make sure we finish up the ellipses before moving on. Obviously, stop recording is there. Tap on the ellipses. Uh, you and the students all have the power to change layout. Uh, typically, the system tries to pick the one that benefits the user most. Um, during a Google Meet, if a teacher is sharing her screen, I recommend students choose Spotlight to um, make sure they can see everything and use as much real estate on their device as possible to see the screen. Full screen is also cool. The only problem with full screen is sometimes kids don't know how to get out of full screen, but if one uses full screen view, uh, to get out of it, they just hit the escape button on a PC. Um, and then on a Chromebook, there's also an escape button, and I think there's something similar on a Mac, so they should be okay. But you might be asked that sometime in the future. There's that turn on captions. Not sure why it's in two places, but there you go. And then settings 
can um, be a place where you, if you have a student with audio or video issues, um, audio is not coming through clearly or the video is garbled or whatnot, you can ask them to fiddle with this. They might have more than one camera or more than one speaker or something on their device. Um, you shouldn't really have to do that often, but it is there for you. And it, I would be remiss if I didn't point that out. Um, and then this little help button down here doesn't lead to us, of course, but it leads to Google. And they have some really, really good support, some like, you know, nuts and bolts, step by step, how to do certain things. At the top right, uh, you can see, of course, you are the one who's speaking. The time, it's nice to have a clock sitting there. I wish there was a countdown up here because I, I can see a, a a good use for that. If you like to have a timer going, I would normally have my phone going in the classroom with a timer on it, but you could also open a new um, a tab in your browser and have a timer set. Um, I think you could just go Google timer, just open a new page, go to Google, Google timer, and then set that. And then you can have that going kind of in the background as you're teaching your lesson or whatever you're doing can have that one running. Um, I showed you where to see the list of everybody, but to the right of it is the chat window in Google Meet. If you have not been using Google Meet, you might not know that this is not controlled at all. There are no teacher controls in here right now. And in fact, there's not even a control that allows you to send messages to just some of your people. They in turn cannot send messages to their um, individual classmates. So anything that's happening in chat, you will see, um, but you can't really control right now. Again, you can see why we're so excited about the, um, the updates coming. You're just going to have to establish protocol from the very beginning that chat is only used by you or chat is only used for certain things. On Thursday, we're going to have a webinar about uh, engagement practices, and we're going to be using this chat. We're going to leverage this chat to to benefit us instead of being a distraction. Okay, so those are the basics. I would normally stop now and see if there are any questions. Those are those are the questions that you may see in the stream. And if you have additional questions about the, the basic use, then um, feel free to email us. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to uh, the what you see is what they see part of this presentation, which is about whiteboard apps. Okay, so I'm going to take my cursor right here and I'm going to float down to this black ribbon at the bottom of my screen. That black ribbon is called the task bar. And in my task bar, uh, I have some little icons over here to the right and so do you. Uh, the one I want you to notice is this little pen with a squiggle through it. It's called the Windows Ink Workspace and you might have it or you might not. If you don't, you will hover over the blank area of your taskbar and right click so that you get this menu and it shows show Windows Ink Workspace button. This is what you need. So if there's not a check mark next to it, then it will um, not show that icon. If there is a check mark next to it, it will. So to put the check mark, you just tap on it. All right. So here is mine. When I click on mine, it's going to give me a choice of whiteboard or full screen snip. We're going to talk about whiteboard right now. If it's the very first time I'm using this, I'm going to tap on whiteboard and it is going to ask me to log in. So to log in, you'll simply use your district credentials, your, uh, you know, chino.k12.ca.us credentials. If you have logged in, it'll drop you into the last whiteboard you were working on. I'm going to go up here to the upper left and go back one page so I can see what my landing page looks like for Microsoft Whiteboard. And this indicates I have been using it in the past. I use it for uh, trainings mainly. Uh, I don't have a, a group of cute little 10 year olds like so many of you guys do. I'm going to um, want to create a new whiteboard and I want to teach using the whiteboard. So what I see my students see, again, what I see my students see. So I can tap on this, start a new board, and do all kinds of, you know, wonderful math. So uh, before I do that, I guess I better choose something to write with. So down at the bottom, there is a toolbar. And rather than spending our whole training talking about toolbars and whatnot, I'll just go over it very, very briefly and then refer you to the um, 
Distance Classroom website that we've been sharing, and there's a whole bunch of information in there. When I tap on this, it allows me to choose what color pens I want, find my eraser, find a really cool um, ruler that helps you draw straight lines. Uh, a lasso allows me to circle and erase stuff and go backwards and forwards. So if I just have a nice black pen, how about a red pen? And I can just write on my screen. Now, how am I writing? I am writing with my mouse. So you can be super impressed by that. Um, if I'm going to show students and talk through this, they can see what I see. Using my mouse isn't the most comfortable. I can also use a stylus or my finger if I have a touch screen pen, a uh, touch screen device. I can also use the little pad at the bottom of a surface if I have a Surface Pro. Um, so you can write with a lot of different tools if you um, are talking over it and that's hard to do uh, um, you'll get used to it <laughs> so I'm done inking there's a few other things I could enter text uh, this up here just typing uh, if I want to move that I click out and click back in and I have control to move it around you also saw this little menu pop up I can change the ink color I can copy I can trash it I can do a bunch of things I want you to mess around with these and have fun this is uh, post-it notes which if you know me at all you know I do not like um, post-it notes but what I do like about this one is that I can make it really tiny like that and then get it out of my way um, these over here uh, allows you to enter images either from your computer or from a Bing search, which is just like a Google image search. Or you can even take a picture of something with your computer's camera and then throw it onto this screen and play with that. And then this little plus sign right here, you can bring in a whole PowerPoint, you can bring in a Word doc or PDF, and then just write on them, move them around, refer to them, highlight with them. These in here are... Uh, 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 suggested templates and things that you might want to use with your students. So I recommend going through and, and checking them out. Um, some of them are actually kind of cool. I like this as a parking lot. So if I take this and put it up here and somebody asks something that is not germane to the topic at hand, we can always put it up here in the parking lot and I can shrink it down so it's not distracting and move it out of my way. This is an infinite canvas, which means it is as large as it needs to be. So if I need to move it over and continue doing teaching for today, I can do that. When I'm done with this particular one, maybe I use this one whiteboard all day long, I can go back here and then I can name it. I only name it from here. Invite, delete, untitled whiteboard. There we go. And then this is July 28th whiteboard. Uh, one more thing you might have seen as, as I scrolled through here earlier that some of my whiteboards have little um, Mr. Head and Shoulders on them, and that means that I'm collaborating on this whiteboard with somebody else. Could that somebody else be a student? Absolutely. And so now we've just created a topic for us to talk about on Thursday, which is engaging students. So that is the Windows whiteboard. It's also available in another place. So in addition to that little um, Windows Inc. workspace icon, which takes you to this relatively robust whiteboard, there's a simple version of this whiteboard stored elsewhere. You might be surprised. Hold on. This is my Office 365 landing page. And look at this. There's whiteboard. So I'm going to remind you that you and all students can get to your um, Office 365 account from your Google Classroom, I'm sorry, from your class link. Students' logins are their full email and their district password. When I get to my landing page, or when you get to your landing page, I should say, you probably won't see Whiteboard, but all you have to do to find it is click on All Apps. This will open up everything available to you. There's Whiteboard. Okay, when your students do that the very first time, it will add it to their... Um, You'll add it to their list, their landing page, just like you saw. When we open it, look at this. This is exactly like what we saw on the more robust app version. And so as you uh, look at these, you, you are digging for that word. That word is sync. We are syncing this online version with the app version. So uh, if a student is not, does not have access to the app version, and it very well may, but if it's, you want students to use this and they don't have the app version, they can come in through Office 365 and get a shared or unique 
whiteboard for themselves. I want to show you one thing that you should know, and that is that the whiteboard uh, tools in um, the online version are much, much simpler. So I'm going to, doesn't even let me move it. I only have four pens and an eraser. That is the simplest possible. But if we want our students to be using the whiteboard app for anything, you want to collaborate, you want them to show their work, you want to provide them with something and then they finish it. All of that is possible by using this whiteboard app. Here's the one I shared earlier, or rather the one I made earlier. It has been syncing. There's that tiny post-it, there's the to-do list, there's the typed words welcome, and I can come up here and finish this in a different color, of course. Um, so I want you to play around with this before you use it with students, but we're talking about what you see, they see. And in that um, theme, here we have a great whiteboard program that everyone has access to. Something else that you have in the Google account, if you go to your district Google Drive, I usually go through ClassLink, Make sure you're in your district account, of course. Uh, I don't always land in my district account because I have a couple of accounts I use frequently, but I'm in my district account here. There is a whiteboard called Jamboard, and there it is. It's kind of a cheese-colored um, stylized J. When I tap on that, you'll see that I have used it before. I have a landing page not too dissimilar from the Mi Microsoft whiteboard. Um, again, there are... Uh, Lots of them sitting here that I've stored or that is automatically remembered, actually. But if I tap on this orange circle with the white plus sign in the lower right hand corner, I can create a new one. And when it opens up the new one, you're going to see the tools on the left, not going through tool by tool. I'm going to let you guys play with this on your own. But they are pretty simple tools in this online version of Jamboard. Um, the online version just takes more programming. And so you're usually going to get you know, the simpler version there. Uh, pen, eraser, chooser, um, sticky notes, and bringing in images. This is cool, it's a laser pen. Watch, it's gonna disappear. Cool. Um, the one thing I really like about the uh, Jamboard is that it automatically just generates extra pages. So in the Microsoft Whiteboard, you had the infinite canvas, which meant that it was as large as you needed it to be. But on this one, I have different pages. And what I could do with those pages is just have one page per day for a week and then store my my notes for that week in here. Or I could actually put a student's name on each page and then share it with my students. Again, we'll talk about this on Thursday for engagement practices. Um, I will point out that this right here is not something you're ever going to click. A Jamboard is a, a Google brand um, giant 75 inch uh, interactive flat panel. So we don't have those. You're not going to use that. Um, but uh, again, Jamboard is another option for a um, a tool to use what you see, they see. Okay. Also, uh, you might have a ViewSonic Viewboard in your classroom and you want to, want to know if you can use that. Um, it's not going to make your job any easier. And I don't know how you feel about teaching to an empty classroom, but you certainly may use your ViewSonic Viewboard. If the reason you're using it is because you like the whiteboard um, program that it came with, then I'm going to ask you to consider doing this. I'm going to minimize everything here. And I have right here the myviewboard.com whiteboard software loaded on my computer because your view board is just a computer and it has a software. Then you can also download the software onto your smaller device and then you'll be more comfortable using this software, which is really cool. Lots of, of wonderful tools. Uh, that you might already be familiar with, but uh, you can just do it from your laptop if you want to. And for more information about that, please either reach out to me or check that EdTech Distance Classroom website. I think I do have one thing about this software on that. This is for your um, uh, your advanced level whiteboarders because there's sure a lot of stuff sitting here. Okay, so what about dot cams? Let's let's work on our uh, uh, dot cam portion. I'm going to go back into my class link and I'm going to go into an area where I have photos because it would be um, inconvenient to try and record my setting up a dot cam for a Google Meet because quite frankly I don't have a dot cam for starters and second there's a couple different brands and third I can point you to directions that will walk you through it on a printable sheet of paper but for this conversation yes 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 and yes a million times you may 
use your dot cam during a Google Meet. What you see on your screen, your students see on, on their screens. And so if you want to share yourself using the dot cam, the first thing is to make sure that your computer recognizes your dot camera. And there are going to be situations where yours is older and cannot be recognized by your district device. So I'm going to tap on some pictures and help you through that. First, there's two different kinds of dot cams in our district. One of them is uh, called the Aver. Avers have been around quite a while. There's several models of Aver dot cams, dot cameras. Um, this Aver, or all Avers rather, are usually black. I haven't seen a different color. Um, if I go to the next picture, it's going to show you some of the ports. This is not a port we're going to use on your Aver. This is for a flash drive, so we're not going to use that. And I'm sorry, this is blurry. This is a VGA connection, plugged and unplugged. We are not going to use that either. That will not communicate with your device. And by device, I mean your computer. We are not going to use these either. And I know a bunch of you are like, I can't use this one. HDMI is supposed to be the best. And um, it, it, trust me, does not communicate with your device. So no. These are for sound. I've tried this one. This is an older version of Aver. I've tried this one and this one, and they did not work. The only way you're going to be able to connect your Aver dot cam to your computer is by using what we call the printer cable. Sometimes we call it the doghouse cable. This right here is, I believe it's called USB B, and this right here is shaped a little bit like a doghouse. And that is on one end of the cord that you will need in order to connect this to your device. The other end of the cord is a regular, normal looking USB connection. But this right here is what you need on your Aver in order to have your PC recognize it. Uh, let me continue. Right here is the cord that you need. Um, this cord is the doghouse end, and this is the USB end. The doghouse is also called USB. But I don't want to confuse anybody. This goes into your dock camera. This goes into your computer. And then you should hear the magic ding ding of your computer recognizing that there is a powered dock cam uh, connecting to it. Now, when you do that, that's just half the problem. Um, by the way, this cord is what you used to use when we were scanning the, um, uh, I think they were Illuminate answer sheets. You used to have to plug it in and um, with your dot cam, you would scan it. So I know every Aver came with one of these and every Epson came with one of these too. We're going to talk about Epson in a second. Um, you've taken care of half the problem and, and truly the most difficult problem was getting to this point. The second part of your issue is going to be um, loading the software and it's not a, a, a difficult task and the paperwork on the um, EdTech website I keep sending you to has the link for the um, Aver software which is called Sphere. And isn't it? I think it's called Sphere. Let me double check. Hold on. Yes, I confirmed it is called Sphere too. Um, and when you download that software, the, the, uh, what it's providing you is what's called a visualizer. The visualizer will find the camera, or you may have to choose the camera. The directions are on that little uh, sheet I'm referring you to on the uh, Distance Classroom website. And you are in business, so whatever you're doing on your desk is visible on your computer. When you run your Meet, present now entire, um, entire, what's it called, entire window. And your students will see it properly. You might, depending on your computer and its resolution, you might see the words in reverse on your screen. But trust me, the students see it properly. And I would recommend just watching what you're doing under the dot, dot cam. You'll get more comfortable with this as you practice. I'm going to show you a couple more pictures because there is another brand out there. And that brand is called Epson. They are usually white. They look something like this. The Epson dot cam has the same issue that the Aver does. It can only be connected to your um, district device with that same kind of cord, that same uh, printer cable that has the doghouse on one end and the um, 
USB on the other. Now this right here is is um, I, I bought a couple just so I could have some a sam couple samples. Uh, this is what it looks like on Amazon. Should you ever need to do that? And I want to see if there's anything else. And then when when you have a um, an Epson and you need to download software, you've got your computer recognizing your dot cam, you found the cord, everything's plugged in and working that way. Your software is, I believe, called A+. So you have a different flyer with a link on it that'll take you directly into the um, directly into the software that you need to download. And real quickly, I'm just going to go ahead and share. Uh, here is the Distance Classroom Resources. Uh, I am in Google Meet. Here is the printable PDF for Aver, and it, again, it's called Sphere. There's a the cord, there's the images, and same thing with Epson. We have not to be forgotten is Epson. Um, if you have a different brand, maybe you uh, purchased it on your own or you want it at, a, at an event at Chet or something, um, you can reach out to us and we'll help you out. I can almost guarantee you're probably going to need the printer cable for it. Um, so again don't ever throw away your cords this be a lesson to you okay so here we are we've got one more thing to talk about and that is breakout rooms and right now as you know breakout rooms are not available in google meet and uh we can we can offer a couple of different solutions that are um you know, just worth trying out and see if they work for you. Uh, one solution, Robert has recorded a video for it and he has shown step-by-step -step how to create sort of a help room. And that help room is basically what happens when you start a second Google Meet through the Google Meet SSO app. And then you share the link to that Meet with your students in the chat window right here. Let me walk through that with you. I'm going to go ahead and go to my class link. In Classic, I'm opening Google Meet SSO. It says join or start a meeting. I'm just going to start one and call it Help Room and continue. And now, of course, I'm going to join because I do need to be in that. I'm going to copy the joining information and close this window. Now this meeting is open, but there's nobody else in it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit mute because as soon as somebody comes in, I don't need them hearing my voice if I'm talking to our lesson classroom. And because it can be kind of distracting to have my head bobbing around, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my camera. This meet still exists just because there's no camera or microphone turned on for this doesn't mean anything. I'm going to go up to the tab where my lesson is occurring and here is my chat room. Remember what's on my clipboard is my join meet information. I'm going to control V which pastes that information into the chat room and when I send it, remember it goes to everybody, I'm now having a conversation with my students. I'm going to say this is where you go if you need help or I can even go need help from me use hello the link above now I don't want them doing this throughout my lesson I don't want them interrupting my lesson so I probably wouldn't send this out until it's time for my students to work independently so if I have students um, in, a, in a Google meet and we're having a lesson from 10 to 10 30 and from 10 30 to 11 they're gonna work on a project either independently or collaboratively um, if they need help they can open a new tab or not even open a new tab they don't have to do that they can tap on this and be taken to this meeting now from 10 30 to 11 while my students are doing independent work i need to be in here to see if anybody needs help i can pop between meetings back and forth here i am on my lesson meeting and close my chat we just finished our lesson. Hey kids, it's 1030. You're going to go off and do your independent work. If you need me, there is a link in your chat window that you can tap on. Please be courteous. If I'm already speaking with another student, please close the tab and return after one minute and wait your turn. I appreciate that very much. And then I'm going to turn off my camera and microphone right here while you guys are working independently. 
And then you can see me pop over to the help one and open it up. So I'm waiting for students to arrive. Students can share their screen with me. I can share my screen with them. I can help them out. If somebody pops in here and they want, I will know that because this right here will change. I'll get a little alert and I will just say, uh, you know, Alana, we're already meeting. I already have a meeting going on right now. Please come back in one minute. And then Alana pops out. And I know when Alana's popped out because this number up here will again change back to two. Um, if I want to have small group meetings, I can totally run them that way. I can um, I'm going to close my help window and go to my teaching class. And again, I'm just popping back and forth between tabs at the top of my screen right up here. This is where my, my teaching is and this is my help. If um, I want to instead host a small group, that's all what I need to put in my, in my meeting here is I've created another room. This is a space for Alana, Braden, Charlie, David, and Ed. So I just type that in there and do that. That is, that is one workaround. I know that um, some folks are ready for something a little bit more elaborate. And so let me demonstrate that. Um, I'm gonna close my extra tab so my computer is at its best performance. And I'm going to go into, this is my uh, Google Drive in my district account. I've created something called Breakout Rooms. This is a slides presentation. It's like PowerPoint. And I know that because I recognize this symbol. I can get a link to this short slides presentation by right clicking, get shareable link. And then I wanna make sure it is not restricted. The default is gonna be restricted. So I'm gonna change that to anyone with a link so that my students don't have to sign in for this. We're just going to be sharing it through our meeting so nobody else is going to be able to get to this anyway. Copy link. Now it's on my clipboard, my virtual clipboard, my invisible clipboard. And I can share this link with my students over here. Again, this is telling them what it is and share it. Now what did I just share with them? Let me show you. In this short two slide slides presentation, I have first our, ignore this right here, ignore this. I'll show you how to do that later. I have that our home base instruction is happening with me from 10 to 10.30 and from 11 to 11.30. And then the second slide has students broken into three collaborative groups. They are meeting with those groups from 10.30 to 11 and each of these groups is hyperlinked. And so those students, Anna, Bethany, Cruz, David, and Ethan, are gonna tap on this and be taken into one Google Classroom. I'm sorry, Google Meet. These students, when they tap on this, are taken into a second Google Meet, and these are taken into a third. And of course, you have access to these links as well. Now, we always wonder, well, can Anna click on Collaborative B? Yeah, she can, she can. It's not a perfect system. But after you've established some um, protocols and norms and digital citizenship and whatnot, um, hopefully we can trust our kids to do this. And if not, then we are forced to wait for the breakout rooms um, being offered by Google Meets and Google Classroom later this year. Well, this was long and I'm going to have to end it now. We had a one hour long uh, webinar that didn't record well, so this is a recreation of that. I think pretty much everything that was included yesterday is included here. The one thing you're missing is the chat questions. Um, and if you have additional questions, please reach out to us. But I encourage you to play with those whiteboard apps and try finding your printer cable for the dot cam. And just uh, have some practice Google Meets with your colleagues. Thanks a lot.